right, good morning. Uh, Monday morning, October 31st. I um, just had the last cup of coffee probably for the morning. Sitting in front of the heater with Bonesy, the Doberman. And, um, you know, there's, I guess, two schools of thought when it comes to um, whether or not you should announce any plans of things, projects you may be doing. I think some people prescribe to the idea that um, they keep it tight-lipped until they get some momentum or even become successful to a degree um, before they let kind of let the cat out of the bag of some of the things they're doing, you know, maybe a small business or something like that. Um, and I've done that, I think, to a degree in my own life. Um, and I'll give you an example. I've, um, for years and years and years, I've talked about raising meat birds. Um, and I don't just mean for my consumption. Um, I'm really, my family doesn't have a lot of meat eaters. Let me, let me say this way. My kids don't eat a lot of meat. Um, I eat meat. My wife is a vegetarian. But my kids, they don't eat much. So we buy meat in uh, small packaging and stuff like that. And if we buy big amounts of meat, it often goes bad before we get a chance to eat it. But um, so I've always wanted to be able to do my own meat birds and stuff so we could absorb some of that cost of uh, you know those meat costs we can maybe lower them a little bit we eat mostly organic food and as folks know it tends to be more but um more money so what i'm gonna put out there and then i'm hoping this helps motivate me to actually do do it is um this spring, I'm going to give myself uh, May 1st. That's the date. So by May 1st, I want to have at least two chicken tractors built. And I would like to have the side of the barn finished so I could house some chickens in there as well in the, in the new lean-to that I'm building. And what I would like to do is raise about 75 meat birds, 50 to 75 meat birds, um, from chick to uh, chicken nugget, if you will. <laughs> so I, we, we would, you know, I'm probably gonna do Cornish Cross or uh, Rhode Island Red, but um, in fact, no, it would be Cornish Cross because of the price. But anyhow, so I would do about 50 of those out on the pasture with the chicken tractors moving them around and and uh just see how that goes and then i would i think i want to do another 25 in a more closed in uh chicken run you know they'll have a coop but i also want to be able to open it up into a chicken run which would be uh full of composting material and just see what materializes from that um you know do they uh pick and scratch through that compost and produce a little better tasting bird does it help lower my grain costs anything like that you know does it make it easier to do the job of moving them and feeding them and watering them and whatnot so raise them uh we have a processor within about an hour's distance from the house that will process the meat, but they will also do, um, what is it here? I'll bring it up real fast. They'll also do the FDA inspection for no fee or the USDA at current voluntary inspection rate. So to be able to have labels and say, this is, um, you know, FDA inspected or whatever, USDA certified, I think would ease some of the consumers' minds. So, um, you know, from that, I would have processed birds that are packaged um, with my label, with weight, you know. They do deboning, so I could have uh, 
boneless, skinless thighs and, and, and breasts and stuff. Uh, pretty much any way you want, want the meat to come out. So, and then from there, I think my goal would be to try to get in with local butchers to see if um, they would purchase my birds to butcher and sell in their markets or, or you know, I could sell pre-butchered product to them that they could sell to their customers. Um, but it's, it's, it's got to start somewhere. I imagine the first how many ever chickens I do, I'll probably give a lot away as, as to try to entice folks to buy more. And uh, I, I think I'll give some to my family members. But uh, so I'm putting it out there. That's my goal. May 1st, 2023, to have two chicken tractors, to have a separate coop at the barn for overflow chickens, um, and begin that process. I think I would, it's between six to eight weeks, I reckon, um, that I'd be feeding them and housing them and whatnot. And then I would make arrangements to have them taken in to be processed. So I think I could get all that done through the winter, certainly building those chicken tractors I can. Um, and I think this doing this video is just a little bit of a, like accountability. It's having it out there, posting it on YouTube, knowing that my friends and family may see it and maybe um, waiting to see if I can pull it off, you know, but, uh, stay with me, stay tuned. And I'll, you know, if, if, if I am motivated and I'm, I'm serious about it, I imagine you'll see me building either the addition onto the barn real soon or, uh, building chicken tractors to go out and in, into the field, probably both. So. Um, I look forward to the challenge and I look forward to uh, sharing that with you. So good Monday morning, start the week off good, start the month of November off good and uh, have a blessed week. Bye.